Holy cow, ladies and gentlemen, we got a video today. Oh, what we are gonna be doing is going through the 10 worst diets in the entire world. These are these are the worst diets I've ever seen in my entire life. I discovered this and I just had to share it with you guys. So what we're gonna do is go through this video I found detailing the top 10 worst diets. I'm gonna comment on them and uh, we're gonna laugh together and hopefully we walk away from this having learned something. And that something is that if you know anybody that has tried one of these diets, get as far away from them as possible because you could be talking to the next Brian Laundry. Anyways, what I have here is a video from All Time Tens, 5.63 million subs on YouTube, and it is titled The 10 Most Dangerous Diets. It's got about half a million views, so I really think we're in for a ride. Let's get this going, shall we? 10 Dumbest Diets. 10, Tongue Patch Diet. A doctor in California introduced the tongue patch diet, which involves sewing a patch of plastic mesh onto a patient's tongue. The patch causes severe pain when the patient attempts to eat solid food and therefore forces the dieter to stop eating and only consume liquids. Holy shit. <laughs> Can you imagine going to your doctor and you tell him you want to lose a little weight and he suggests sewing a patch onto your tongue that's going to cause you physical pain when you eat. This is probably the same doctor that'll stop a pregnancy with a coat hanger. I wouldn't trust this man. Now, after doing a little research, this was created in Beverly Hills, California in 2009 and it kind of makes sense that an idea like this would come from Los Angeles. Think about it this way, you get the tongue patch, then all you can really consume at that point is the blood of children, which I heard is great for anti-aging effects and is pretty low calorie. The best ideas come out of California. No scientific studies have been carried out to ensure the diet's safety, and Dr. Rob Heisinger, a weight loss specialist, has slated the procedure, stating that it's no different from somebody holding a gun to your head, threatening to shoot you every time you eat. This is like going throughout your day and you just have Michael Myers following you, holding a knife. Anytime you get close to food, that arm raises. Friendly reminder, don't get the tongue patch installed. Instead, just eating a calorie deficit. It's, it's better for you in the long run, I think, than the tongue patch. I could be wrong, but I, I, would, I would think that. Nine cotton balls. Originating in the modeling industry, this diet involves eating a cotton ball that has been soaked in juice. Dieters claim that eating cotton wool makes them feel full and suppresses their appetite, reducing their calorie intake from real food. Now this is a diet that has really taken low calorie dense, high volume foods to the next level. It's also very flexible because if you run out of cotton balls, you can just eat an article of clothing. I've heard through the grapevine that a baseball cap is like the ribeye of cotton products. Not only is this absurd, but if you ever for once thought that this was a good idea, you need to get your head checked. You got some screws loose up there and I think someone should take a peek around, see what's going on. However, Eating cotton balls leads not only to malnutrition, but also to serious digestion issues, such as the occurrence of bezoars. What is a bezoar? That thing looks like a decaying marmot. A bezoar is something that gets swallowed and becomes trapped in the intestine, and if not treated, it can become life-threatening. Imagine going to the doctor and you do your physique check, your, your health weigh-in, and he's like, hey, you've been losing some pounds. You're like, yeah, but uh, I'm getting a little pain in my stomach. He does an x-ray and he discovers there's a continent size Bezoar just in your stomach. That's our word for the day, people, Bezoar. I mean, if your goal is strictly weight loss and you wanna feel full, this uh, isn't a, a bad way to get there, but I would think that if you have any type of brain, you're not eating cotton balls soaked in juice. Sounds uh, like a bad way to go out. On the tombstone at Red, he died doing what he loved, eating cotton balls and the occasional baseball cap ribeye. Eight, Red Bull Diet. In 2009, a mother from New Zealand lost 45 kilograms in eight months by drinking nothing but 10 to 14 cans of Red Bull a day. Holy cow, 10 to four, let me do some quick research on this. So each can of Red Bull has 110 calories and all of that is carbohydrates. You get no protein, you get no fat, and then you get all that caffeine on top of it. This sounds like the perfect way to die an early death. Now she did lose 45 kilograms in eight months. That's like right around 100 pounds, which I would say the, the diet was successful, but it was cost. I've heard of yo-yo dieting, but this is more like YOLO dieting. You only live once, so why not shorten your life and go out in good shape? This diet is for the person that doesn't care when they die. As long as when they hit that casket finally, they were shredded and the pictures look good on the gram. The only solid food she consumed was a daily handful of dry honey puffs. After losing almost half her body weight, she was forced to end the diet after it triggered a heart attack. Stopping the diet caused her to experience extreme caffeine withdrawals, and she now suffers from lifelong health issues, such as a heart murmur and severe stomach cramps. 
Who'd have thought the Red Bull diet would have turned out <laughs> suboptimal for your health? I mean, I'm a fan of caffeine, but if I drank that much caffeine in a day, you'd catch me up at 3 a.m. chopping wood. I don't even know what I'd do with all that energy. So she lost 100 pounds, but is now suffering severe lifelong ailments because of it. Was it worth it? I'd venture to say it wasn't because I imagine taking that bikini selfie from a hospital bed doesn't quite hit the same. Seven, Sleeping Beauty Diet. This diet became particularly popular in the 1970s when Elvis Presley adopted it after finding it difficult to fit into his trademark jumpsuits. The diet involves taking pills that put the body under heavy sedation for several days. Essentially a form of starvation, the body is forced to burn calories it has stored up because no food is being digested to replenish nutrient levels. This is a lot like that classic Disney tale of old, except the sleep isn't induced by a curse, but instead by a prescription pill problem and crippling self-esteem issues. And a love for cake. Don't forget the love for cake. Dieters experience extreme malnutrition and often become addicted to the sedatives. This is like extreme fasting. Instead of being disciplined, just drinking water, maybe fasting for 24 to 36 hours, you put yourself into a drug-induced coma to reduce your weekly calorie intake. I've heard of restrictive eating, but this is getting out of hand, man. Maybe this is the reason some people stay doing opiates. Yeah, you'll see your life crumble all around you, but hey, it kept us thin. Sometimes it ain't about the journey, but the thin we made along the way. Yeah, don't do this in case you don't, you don't need me to tell you that. If you didn't gather that from here and you're wondering, don't do it. Six ear stapling diet. The ear stapling diet involves surgically attaching small staples into the inner cartilage of each ear for several months. Dieters claim that the staples stimulate a pressure point that controls appetite and reduces sugar cravings, thus burning fat. Imagine going to your doctor and being like, man, I'm struggling with my weight. I just can't keep it off. And the doc goes, hey, I think I have a solution. What we'll do is put a staple in your ear that will create a constant pressure in your head. And if we couple that with your extreme body dysmorphia, your depression and your crippling anxiety, I really believe we will get your hunger under control. However, there is no scientific data to prove that it works works, and most research states that it is merely the placebo effect that leads to weight loss. This procedure has health risks and has been known to cause severe infection and permanent disfigurement to the ear. Severe infection and permanent ear disfigurement all because you wanted to lose a couple pounds. It really ain't rocket science, people. You eat in a calorie deficit, you eat less calories than your body needs in a day, and you have adequate protein, you're gonna have ideal weight loss. It is really that simple. Don't do fad diets, and for the love of God, don't get your ear stapled. I'm telling you, you'll look like one of them UFC fighters with the cauliflower ear at the end of it, and most likely it was all due to placebo. So yeah, don't, no, don't do this, don't. Five, baby food diet. Celebrity fitness trainer Tracy Anderson established the baby food diet, which involves replacing three regular meals with 14 pots of baby food each day. After actress Jennifer Aniston was reported to have lost three kilograms on the diet, the weight loss technique became widely popular. This goes to show how many people out there are really sheep. No one probably would have ever done this diet, but Jennifer Aniston lost seven pounds on it, and it seems like a miracle. If we look here, hold on, let me, a little research. After looking it up, the average thing of baby food is between 90 to 110 calories. So if you're eating 10 of those a day, you're on a thousand calorie diet, which is uh, what some people would call a crash diet. So it's not that the baby food has this magic radioactive goo, disgusting looking formula inside of it that causes you to lose weight. It's just you're eating less calories and you're getting like no protein. The baby food I looked at had one gram of protein per serving. So you end the day, 1,000 calories, 10 grams of protein. You're gonna lose weight, it ain't gonna be ideal, but it's gonna happen not due to the food, but to the calorie deficit. It supposedly cuts calorie intake and encourages food portion control, allowing dieters to shed weight quickly. The diet can often backfire, however. Baby food lacks the protein that adults require and consumption can thus slow down metabolic rate. And there we have it. Like I always preach, you wanna make sure you're eating enough protein if you want your weight loss to be ideal. Not only is protein the most thermogenic of all the macronutrients, meaning that the more protein that you eat, the more calories your body actually burns digesting it. So it's overall great for lowering your calories without actually lowering your calories, if that makes sense. It's gonna keep you more full. And when you are trying to lose weight, it's way more muscle sparing to be on a high protein diet than it is to have no protein. So you have no protein, you know what your muscles are consisted of? 
protein. So when you don't have it in your diet, your body, when it's looking for fuel, it's got two options. Does it want the fat on you or does it want the muscle on you? If your diet is lacking in protein, it's way more likely to burn off that muscle. If you haven't realized by being this far into the video, people will do anything to lose weight except for what actually works in the long run. If you want a diet that's actually sustainable, where you eat good food, you're eating the higher protein, lower calorie versions, don't forget I have my cookbook available at the first link in the description box. Everything is broken down, all the calories, step-by-step -step instructions, how to make delicious foods like chocolate chip waffles, protein pizzas, protein ice creams, things like that. We're not actually giving up the foods you love. You're still following the same style of food you're eating before, except you're eating the better versions. I'm telling y'all, you get this, you follow us in it, you are guaranteed results, and you're not gonna end up in the hospital unlike the majority of these diets. Is this better than the Red Bull diet? I guarantee it, man. Link in description, check it out. Let's get back to this. Four, the cigarette diet. In the 1930s, major tobacco company Lucky Strike Cigarettes ran advertisements claiming that smoking would cause weight loss, exploiting nicotine's potential to reduce appetite. Slogans claimed that instead of eating between meals, beautiful women keep youthful slenderness by smoking Lucky Cigarettes. Holy cow, talk about marketing right there. Those are some geniuses. Imagine being in the room with the marketers that thought this up. They're like, you know what the ideal female is? One that looks slightly cracked out, has a terrible case of the black long and is hanging out on the corner of the 7-Eleven chain smoking cigarettes. Not only is that marriage material, but she's thin and petite. As someone that uh, used to be a cigarette smoker back in the day, I will say when I did quit, I don't know how much of it was like appetite suppressant from nicotine or just the fact that I was so used to like having a cigarette, the, like oral fixation thing that I felt like I did eat more and I did gain a little bit of weight. But long term, cigarettes are a terrible, nasty, dirty habit. I don't recommend anybody does it. End up with a case of the black lung and you'll be on a 7-Eleven corner in no time. The campaign became pivotal in the growth of the female smoking market, boosting sales by over 200%. However, unsurprisingly, it eventually led to high rates of lung cancer in women. Hey, the whole company got rich, but uh, you killed a lot of people, so was it worth it? The most messed up part is they're probably sitting on their yachts, flipping through stacks of $100 bills, and uh, they could care less about any of this. Sad, but probably true. I don't see cigarette companies holding high ethical standards, if you know what I mean. Three the tapeworm diet. This diet involves taking illegal pills filled with the eggs of a tapeworm. Once ingested, the tapeworms grow inside the body and absorb some of the food the dieter eats, thus hindering weight gain. Holy, can you imagine anybody actually doing this? Look, bro, all you gotta do is take these pills until you're infested with bugs, right? And once you're infested with bugs, those bugs will eat what you eat. Are you with me? Are you with me? And then eventually those bugs will run out of food and they'll just eat you. PETA hates this diet, but the waistline loves it. However, the tapeworms aren't confined to the stomach and can deviate to other parts of the body, including the brain. In 2014, a teenage girl from Florida was found with dozens of tapeworms inside her intestines after her mother secretly fed her the pills to make her thinner for an upcoming beauty pack. Wow, and the mother of the year award goes to this bitch. Jesus, man. I don't even know what to say. There was a lot there. The, the worms can move up into your brain, give you a brain worm. And we have what is most likely a Florida mother poisoning her daughter with worms. I don't know what else to say other than this diet could lead to the remake of the movie Alien real quick. Remember when that thing pops out the chest? That might happen on this diet. Eventually, once the tape worms consume you from the inside, they're coming for your friends and family. Hide your kids, hide your wife. Two, HCG diet. Injecting a hormone found in the urine of pregnant women supposedly accelerates weight loss. The hormone known as HCG is injected into dieters once a day and combined with a 500 calorie a day diet. The hormone supposedly tricks the body into thinking it's pregnant, burning off fat, and converting it into energy intended for both a mother and fetus. So this is actually a diet some of y'all might remember. This was like maybe 2016, 2015, when I first started like really getting into fitness and cutting down. I had my first photo shoot I was doing. Now I remember the day of my photo shoot, after it was done, we went to a restaurant in town and there was a bunch of people there. And this girl was trying to like sell people on this diet. She worked for one of those like MLM companies where like everybody's making money off everybody else. It's like a big scam. And she, Anyway, she was trying to tell me this is the diet she was on, was this HCG diet. You take these shots, you eat 500 calories a day. And I remember her sitting there and she's telling me she's on the diet, but she ordered all of this greasy food. And then she told me she holds up a bottle of pills and they were 
carb blockers. And she's like, yeah, anytime I wanna eat bad, I just take these pills, then I can eat carbs, I can eat cheeseburgers, I can eat fries. I remember this clearly, me sitting there just being like, no. <laughs> It's not how it works. But honestly, this diet is only really working. I bet you it's not the hormone doing anything at all. It's literally the fact that you're on a 500 calorie crash diet. You're eating in a calorie deficit, less calories than you need in a day. That is why this is working. It's not the HCG. There is no scientific evidence to prove this, however, and research has shown that the weight loss occurs purely from the severe calorie restriction rather than the presence of HCG. And there you have it. Create a calorie deficit, you will see results. When you do things like this though, and you crash diet on like 500 calories, not only is it unsustainable, but the majority of people that end up doing this end up gaining the weight back almost immediately because something like this is not something you can do long term. You gotta find what works for you long term. If you're on a diet and you're sitting there thinking like, man, I can't wait till this is over, then you're on the wrong diet. You need to be eating something, doing something that is sustainable. One, feeding tube diet. Most popular with brides-to-be, the feeding tube diet promises to shed 9 kilograms in just 10 days. As part of the diet, a feeding tube is inserted through the nose and down into the stomach, which then slowly drip feeds a liquid solution of protein and vitamins 24 hours a day. Are you the laziest person in the world? Do you have zero self-control and the inability to think for yourself? If the answer to all three of those was yes, then I have the diet for you, the feeding tube diet. Oh my God. Imagine they gotta hook you up with tubes and they're pumping a liquid into your body all day because you don't have the self-control to put the fork down. I mean, this is just like next level laziness. I don't know what's worse, like this or like the Red Bull diet or the Cotton Ball diet, simply because this one requires for you to be drip fed through a bag. The amount of stuff you're giving up to do this diet is unreal. I don't think you can go to the movies with an IV drip going. Maybe you can, I don't know. I, just, I feel like if you're doing this, at least I'm not questioning how bad you want to lose the weight. If you're willing to go this far, I don't think there's much you wouldn't do. <laughs> this thrusts the patient's body into the first stages of starvation, forcing the body to burn stored fat. Dieters are put at a health risk as the procedure is not medically supervised and can also cause a severe erosion of nose tissue. And once again, we reach the conclusion here in that this diet only worked for people because they were in a calorie deficit. It wasn't the IVs, it wasn't the fact that it was a liquid only diet, it wasn't a special concoction in the bag that it's drip feeding you like an elderly patient, none of that. It was the calorie deficit. So we just went through the 10 worst diets on this planet. I want you guys right now to comment below what you thought the worst one is or if you've seen one even more egregious than this. Y'all let me know down below. The comments are always appreciated. And if you enjoyed this video, if you could hit that thumbs up button for me, that means a lot. I'm testing out some new content on the channel, trying to see what people like. And those thumbs up and those comments uh, mean the world. If you wanna see more stuff like this, you guys let me know and I will do my best. And don't you guys forget the best tasting protein bar on the market, the Anabar, is available at finalbossformance.com. Could RGF 10 saves you 10% and the new s'mores flavor drops November 4th at 4 p.m. Central. So set a reminder because we are guaranteed to sell out. Y'all are gonna love this one. And yeah, if there's one takeaway from this video, I think everybody should have, it's that you don't need to do any of this goofy crash dieting, super secret strategy type of stuff. That's what these diets sell you on, man. They sell you that like you're gonna do this one thing and this one thing is like the secret and the key. When in reality, the secret to weight loss is simply being in a calorie deficit. If you want that weight loss to be ideal, eat enough protein and you're gonna be just fine. Figure out how many calories you need in a day, eat under that, be consistent, eat out of my cookbook and you are gonna be in a good spot. Appreciate you guys as always and until next time ladies and gentlemen i'll see each and every one of you at the next video see you guys bam 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 now i'm gonna go eat some cotton balls